This is C.J. Baker, and this is the ongoing history of protest music. So as previously mentioned, I'm part of a music community. And in connection with that, I recently did a 1994 deep dive. So I released a series of 1994 related videos. So a video dealing with the top 25 albums and 25 songs of 94. And then of course, because this is a protest music channel, I released videos of the 10 best protest songs and albums of 94. So initially I thought I was done with 94, but I decided I'll record two more videos. So it's gonna be the best songs and best albums of protest albums and songs of 1994 according to AI. So up to this point, I've been shying away from using AI, but I decided for fun, I would type in, write an article about the top 10 protest albums of 94. And I did the same thing with protest songs. So even though I still haven't been using AI with my website, this list kind of confirms why I've been shying away from it. But we'll get right into the list. So we're going to do albums first, and then next I'll post a video on songs. So the number one protest album, according to AI, is Dookie by Green Day. So this did make my list of top 25 albums, but I didn't include it on my top 10 protest albums just because I don't really think it's a protest album. But we'll see what AI has to say about Dookie. So it mentions why predominantly known for their punk rock sound and catchy anthems Green Day's album Dookie contained elements of social commentary. Tracks like Welcome to Paradise and Basket Case reflected a generation's frustration and disillusionment, making the album a subtle protest against the challenges of modern life. So I do agree with the aspect of expression, frustration, and disillusionment. But I think for the most part, that's more personal than political. And I also agree when it says subtle protest. So I think any aspect of protest on the album is very subtle and you really have to spend time looking for it. So it's definitely a stretch to call this a protest album and to say it's the number one protest album released in 94, I think is definitely questionable. But we'll see what the next album, so the album that AI ranked as the second best protest album of 94 is Vitology by Purge Jam. So I really love this album. I had it at a strong four and a half. I believe I had it at number eight on my list of 25 albums. But it did not make my list of 10 protest albums. Because once again, I thought it was a little bit of a stretch. I mean, most Per Jam albums contain at least some social commentary. And the sophomore album from 93, Versus, I actually included in a list I made of the 100 protest albums of the 90s. And you can find that list on my website, ongoinghistoryofprotestsongs.com. But as far as this particular album goes, I'm not sure if it quite meets the definition of protest, but I'll read what the AI has to say about it. So it says, Per Jam's third studio album, Vitology featured 
introspective lyrics and a raw emotional sound that spoke to societal issues. Tracks like Not For You and Immortality touch on themes of alienation and social injustice, making it an important record for those seeking meaning in troubled time. So concerning those two songs, I agree with the themes of alienation, but I'm not sure if they really touch upon social injustice. So I guess you could argue that themes such as alienation, maybe it's a social issue. But if we get to the point where every album that deals with social alienation is a protest album, then you can basically apply that to most 90 alternative rock albums. But yes, I do think it's a stretch to say that Vitology is a protest album. So the third best protest album, according to AI, is the Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails. And I do love this album. Like if you watch my previous video, the top 25 albums, you know that this was my number one album. It was a very important, definitive album. But it did not make my top 10 protest album list because I don't know if it's a protest album. But we'll see what the AI has to say about it. It says Trent Reznor's dark and intense album the Downward Spiral delved into themes of self-destruction, addiction, and the dehumanizing effects of modern society. Songs like Hurt and Closer serve as a haunting reflection of the disillusionment and inner turmoil relevant in the 90s. So the overall description, I actually can't argue with a whole lot. It dealt with themes of self-destruction and addiction, and it dealt with disillusionment and inner turmoil. But that expression, inner turmoil, I think is a key expression there. Like it's more personal than political. So once again, I think it's a stretch to say that's a protest album. But we'll get to our next album. So the fourth best protest album of 94, according to AI, is Omatic by Nas. So this album I love. It was my third best album of 94 on my list of 25 albums. And it did make my list of the 10 best protest albums. So this might be the first album here that I actually agree with the AI. So what does AI have to say about Illmatic? Well, it says Naz's debut album, Illmatic, presented a vivid portrayal of life in the inner city, addressing issues such as poverty, violence, and systemic racism. Tracks like New York State of Mind and One Love shed light on the harsh realities faced by the marginalized communities, making it a powerful protest against urban neglect. So this particular time, AI actually got it right. And it made mention of New York State of Mind, which I also included in my list of 25 songs, but I also included it in my list of the 10 best protest songs of 94. So in this case, I can't argue with Nas Automatic, even though Rankin is number four, saying it's the fourth best protest album, when the three albums before it are protest albums. Well, that's, that's kind of questionable. So we'll go to our fifth album 
by Soundgarden, Super Unknown. And once again, is it a protest album? But we'll see what the AI has to say. Soundgarden, Super Unknown combine grunge and alternative rock with deeply introspective lyrics. Tracks like Black Hole Sun and Fell on Black Days convey the sense of existential angst and societal disillusionment, serving as a poignant commentary on emotional turmoil and societal unrest. So in this case, the comments aren't necessarily wrong in themselves. Like it does get into an existential angst. So there's definitely an angst there. And there is a disillusionment. It says societal disillusionment. I mean, that's probably accurate. But once again, that's more personal than political. So as far as speaking out against any specific social issue, I don't think the album really does that. And I don't think it was Chris Cornell's intent to make any serious statement of social commentary. So we'll go to the number six protest album of 94, according to AI. So this is Mel Gold by Beck. Once again, I love the album. It was on my list of 25 albums of 94. But is it a protest album? Well, consider the comments made by AI. It says Beck's lo-fi, genre-defying album, Mellow Gold, contains elements of social satire and cultural commentary. Tracks like Loser and Beer Can offered a sardonic take on consumerism and media manipulation, making it a sub subversive protest against the shallowness of modern society. So you know what? Maybe there's some legitimacy in that argument. Like I never read view Luzo and Beer Can as an intentional commentary on consumerism. But maybe there's some aspects of it and maybe there is a satirical element in some of the songs. So even though I still don't know whether or not it's a protest album, I can see where you can maybe make the argument. So the next album is Monster by R.E.M. So this is, according to AI, the seventh best protest album of 94. So what does AI have to say? So it says R.E.M.'s Monster showcased the departure from their previous sound with gritty rock and enigmatic lyrics that hinted at societal disquiet Tracks like What's the Frequency, Kenneth, and Circus Envy hinted at themes of media scrutiny and mass hysteria, creating a sense of unease and ironic commentary. So yeah, I think a couple of those songs do touch upon some of those themes, so it's probably not entirely accurate. Like, I don't think it's an explicit protest album. I still think it's a bit of a stretch. But I can see where a couple of songs on the album do touch on social issues. So the number eight protest album of 94, according to AI, it's Dummy by Portishead. So Portishead's debut album, Dummy, so this is the AI comment. So Portishead's debut album, Dummy, blended trip hop with haunting melodies and introspective lyrics. Tracks like Sour Times and Glory Box captured a sense of emotional desolation 
and societal disconnection, offering a subtle protest against personal and collective alienation. So I think the one word it did mention is subtle. So I think any protest on this album is subtle. Like it does touch upon themes of alienation, but once again, that's more personal. And even the collective alienation, I don't think it's addressed in any specific social issues on the album. So once again, I think it's a stretch to define this album as a protest album. So the ninth best protest album, according to AI, it's by The Offspring, and it's Smash. So we'll see what the AI has to say about Smash. It says The Offspring, Smash, combined punk rock with social critique, addressing issues such as alienation, disillusionment, and societal decay. Tracks like Come Out and Play and Self-Esteem resonated with a generation grappling with the challenges of adolescence and societal instability. So I think there's some truth there. Like there's a few songs on Smash that contain social critique. Again, I didn't think deeply about it being a protest album just because the album was just okay for me to begin with, so I wouldn't even, even consider it on my list of 10 protest albums. But I think there's some social commentary. Like self-esteem? No, not really. Like, I think that that song shouldn't really be mentioned. But Come Out and Play, it does deal with gun violence. So you could argue that maybe that's a protest song. So the number 10 protest album of 94, according to AI, is by Cheryl Crow, Tuesday Night Music Club. So I do think it's a stretch to say that it's a protest album, but it absolutely does not belong on this list because of one important reason. It was released in 1990. So I'm sure we can agree to be a 1994 protest album, it has to be released in 94. So that basically concludes the list of AI-generated article on the 1994 best protest albums. So how do you think AI did? You can feel free to leave a comment if you want to see me continue to make videos. You can like and subscribe and feel free to check out my newly relaunched Patreon. And you can feel free to check out my website, Ongoing History of ProtestSongs.com. So thanks for watching and please. Stay safe.